Welcome back to Tangled Threads Podcast. I'm your host, Fiona Harvey. In our last episode, we began the story of Pandora and her son, Quentin. Today, we'll continue their journey and see how Quentin adjusts to his new environment. If you haven't already, make sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment with your thoughts. Now, let's jump right back in. Tangled Threads Meeting David Part 2 Now, Quentin didn't have much motivation or ambition in life. The only goal he had, the only job he ever wanted to do, was join the army. It seemed straightforward. Just keep the kid alive and out of trouble till he's 18. Then send him off to the army. They'll kick him into shape and Bob's your uncle. My job is done. Trouble is, right now he's 16 and extremely difficult. Two more years to go. That's 365 times two, that many days. That's that times 24, so many hours. But counting down, the end of the tunnel is in sight. Never let your goal out of your sight. Always keep your eyes on the prize. And the ultimate prize for Pandora, peace. So, everybody knew that Quentin was interested in the army. He was very fit. He trained a lot at the gym. And he knew all the kung fu moves, all the karate chops, all the kickbox kicks. He was a mean and lean machine, especially mean to his mother Pandora, a dictator to his sister Luna, and a nightmare for his baby brother Nelson. The youth centre, as all the institutions working with children, tended to approach Quentin and Pandora with warmth and enthusiasm. In fact, they had a prime example of a success story. One of their old residents at the centre was now all grown up and worked in the army. It might be interesting for Quentin to meet him, listen to his story, be inspired by his motivations and determination and get some good tips on how he too can get himself ready and prepared for a life in service. Quentin was over the moon. He'd get to meet and talk with a real soldier who was almost like one of his peers. It had to happen. He had to meet this guy. The centre made it happen. They would see Army Guy from time to time as he liked to keep in touch with the centre. He would come by at times and help out for the day. You know, stuff like that. They promised they would contact him and see when he could make it for a small talk with Quentin. The date was set. Mid-August, they would meet Army Guy at the centre. The day arrived. Pandora was working from home. It was hot. She was wearing nothing but a little pair of white shorts and a turquoise sleeveless top with deep cleavage. She wasn't going anywhere anyway. Just doing her regular social media consultancy job writing up posts, creating visuals and videos for the high and mighty within the sustainable asset management universe. 
a world she knew so well as she had worked and consulted with financial firms for most of her career. Yet that world started to become more alien to her as time passed by, because that world was a nice one, one of comfort, of decency and decorum, of values and convictions. Not one of screaming and shouting, of threats and punched walls, of black eyes and dislocated joints. The horrible world that was engulfing Pandora was estranging her more and more from everything she ever knew to be real. But right now, Quentin was upstairs, either sleeping or playing his PlayStation. As long as he was upstairs and she was downstairs, working quietly as a mouse, not making any sound, surely they could pass yet another 24 hours without any upset. Please, Maria, mother of God, have mercy. Just one more peaceful day, please. And then suddenly, in the middle of typing up an email, it dawned on her. They were late. The meeting with Army Guy was at 1400 and it was now 1345. They were late and would never get there in time. But all is not lost. Pandora jumped up grabbed her laptop and shoved it into her laptop bag. She then summoned Quentin as she slipped on her golden high-heeled slip-ons, threw her summer bag over her shoulder and dashed out to the car. They would speed all the way to the youth centre as Quentin informed them by phone that they were on their way but would be late. And no worries. If you let people know you will be late, and what they might expect, they are actually quite happy you notified them and then they're willing to stick around waiting for you. Pandora and Quentin arrived at the centre. She immediately set herself up at a table in the shade inside, got her laptop out of its bag, plugged it in and started frantically finishing the email she had started and preparing herself to dial in for her next online meeting. She saw Quentin walk past her with the woman from the centre, Lotta, who she had previously met over the phone, and another tall young lad. That must be the army guy, Pandora thought, as she eyed him from the corner of her eyes. During her online meeting, Pandora couldn't help herself but allow her gaze to float outside and look for her son Quentin, somewhere outside on the huge and vast domain of the youth centre. Then she finally saw him. He looked so happy over the moon. He was working out with the army guy on the grass. He came inside all glowing and asked his mother if he could take off his t-shirt as it was so hot in the blazing August summer sun. And Pandora was happy to see her son so full of enthusiasm and encouraged him to take off his shirt. This was a positive step for Quentin. He would gain confidence about his body image and he would also be soaking up some vitamin D. He was lacking in vitamin D, probably because he spent his days locked away in his darkened bedroom, either sleeping or video gaming. His skin had become so white, she hardly recognized the child he once was. That bronzen, sun-kissed, blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy who loved 
nothing better than playing hockey on the field outside with his mate. That kid was long gone. But what's this? Homikai also takes off his shirt, showing a long, lean, muscle-toned body. A young man's body, sweat glistening in the sun, muscles flexed, young hormones rampant. Pandora found herself looking and then looking away, then looking again with a little smile on her face. There was nothing wrong with looking. She was 47 after all. Too old for this guy, but also old enough to appreciate youthful beauty. She found it made her happy and feel slightly cheeky to peek a look. Nobody would know. Quentin came back in. His workout with Army Guy had ended. Pandora's online meeting was over and she had finished what she was working on for the day anyway. It was 16.15 by then and she knew that after the drive back home it would be too late for a summer's day to continue working. So she took it easy packing up her stuff when army guy and another staff member of the youth centre, Tom, came over to her. The usual politeness. How was it at home? Blah, 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 blah. Army Guy introduced himself. His name was David. He continued giving his motivational speech to Quentin, but he also kept looking over at Pandora and talking to her too. He told her how he had spent some time at the centre when he was an adolescent, how his mother had always kept in touch with him even though he was at the centre and that now he had made peace with his mother. His story touched Pandora. That was also what she longed for, for Quentin to make peace with her, to love her and respect her, to let her be and to allow her to remain in her dignity and above all, to worship and protect his mother no matter what. That was what Pandora deeply desired, what she prayed for when she talked to God, what she focused on when she meditated. She wanted to know more about this. David was so tall and Pandora such a small, tiny woman, she had to throw her head backwards to look up at him. But she met his eyes and they locked though she could not explain. She was searching for something in those eyes and somehow she noticed that young David was also searching for something in her eyes, though she would never know what. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for listening and join me next time as we explore more of Pandora's journey and the challenges she faces. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment. And always remember, even in the darkest of nights, there is a fragment of hope.